This is called the fly challenge. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, O mankind, a parable is related to you, so listen to it. The deities whom you invoke instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot create a fly even though they may all combine together for this purpose. Nay, if a fly snatches away something from them, they cannot get it back from it. How weak are the suppliants and how weak are those who supplicate? What does this mean? He's talking to everyone. He's talking to the believer and to the non-believer. Allah gives you the challenge. Even if all of them were to come together for this purpose, to create one fly, they will never be able to do so. And look at the wording, لَن يَخْلُقُ They will never. So it's not a one person, an individual task. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, bring all the powerful gods, everything that you think that's powerful, bring them all together. And let all their minds work to create just one fly. They will never be able to do so. The Qur'an is filled with challenges and statements. These challenges, we find them, they feed our intellect. They feed the intellect of those who ponder, especially. Allah Azza wa Jal has placed challenges in the Qur'an that make you ponder and contemplate, really think about Allah Azza wa Jal and His greatness. But at the same time, Allah Azza wa Jal, through these challenges, He belittles anything other than Him. Anything that's worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when you read it, you think, you know what? On what basis am I worshipping these things? So if we, if we look at these, these challenges, subhanAllah, that Allah has placed in the Qur'an, we find the miracle of the Qur'an. But it's because the wording that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selects when He's describing the challenge, that's the miracle. And that's why they say the Qur'an al kareem is an everlasting miracle. And we will show them signs in the universe and inside themselves. The reason why this verse was revealed was because the kuffar of Quraysh, they used to have their asnam, their idols. And as we know, the idols, they used to give them food. And some of them used to put saffron onto the idol because saffron has a very nice smell to it. It's got a beautiful scent. And then subhanAllah, a fly would land on the saffron and then would, would consume the saffron. It would, it would do what a fly does. So Allah Azza wa Jal, He revealed this verse. He says, those deities that you take other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't think this doesn't relate to you. Sometimes us, we might forget the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and just focus on the power of the people. This person has my paycheck. This person is taking care of my affairs. This person with one click of a finger, he can destroy a whole, a whole country, a whole nation. We forget the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is constantly reminding us through the generations. He says, those things, those people, those deities that you take other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if all of them were to come together for this purpose, to create one fly. He said, they will not create. Now we know with challenges, a challenge is something to show your power, your strength against your opponent. And now with challenges, it comes in levels. The more power you give to your opponent, and he's unable to do the challenge, to complete the challenge, is a clear indication of how weak your opponent is. What do I mean? If we observe in the verse, Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ 
لن يخلقوا ذبابا those deities that you call upon other than Allah that you invoke other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they will never be able to create a fly and then Allah azza wa jal he gave them something extra on top he says even if every single one of them came together collectively for this purpose and this shows you the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لن يخلق ذبابا Allah knows impossible now can you imagine with a human soul Subhanallah, when, when I read verses like this, I like to sit back and, and to think and imagine. Subhanallah, have you ever thought about your soul? Sometimes it doesn't make sense to me. Like, one person will be alive and well, and then one moment later, they're just they're dead. But it's the same person. It's like, if you look at them, nothing's changed. And I'm talking about a person that, you know, they're... they're they died natural natural causes. If you look at them, the body's still the same. There's just one component missing, the soul. What is the soul? They ask you, O oh Muhammad, about the soul. Say the soul is for is for Allah Azza wa It's in the knowledge of Allah Azza wa No one knows how the soul works. You can't understand it, you can't comprehend it. But Allah Azza wa Jal isn't challenging you with that, bring a human being. He says to you with something so small and insignificant as a fly. So bring a fly, just one fly. But not only that, Allah Azza wa Jal, He increases now the challenge. He says, وَإِن يَسْلُبْهُمُ الذُّبَابُ شَيْئًا لَا يَسْتَنْقِذُوهُ مِنْ even if the fly was to take something from theirs, they would not be able to retrieve it. Subhanallah al-Azim. He says, yaslubhum. It means to thieve something away. Now what's, what's interesting about a thief? When he steals something from you, do you feel it? Are you aware he's stealing something from you? Do you know he's taking it? He takes it so quickly, so swiftly, you don't even feel it. And that's, that is a source of weakness. So Allah Azza wa Jalla is saying, look, these gods that you worship, that saffron that you put on top of your god to make that god smell lovely, if a fly was to land on them, and just to lick, just to take a, a small bite, just to have a bit of the saffron, you will not be able to retrieve it. If it steals it away, you wouldn't even know it's gone. And this is to show you the qudra of Allah Azza wa Jal. That Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He knows the big and He knows the small. He knows what's apparent and He knows what's in your, your heart. This is the qudra of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The reason why I've mentioned this, I go back to that, to that one topic. Do not worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for the sake of just worshipping Him, just, just because it, I have to. I live in a community where everyone prays, so I need to pray. Don't have that perception. Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has already given you enough evidence, enough proof, enough indication that there is nothing, nothing greater than Him. No matter how influential you can become, but you'll never reach the status of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can reach that status. No one can reach that power. I'll share with you guys a story. And this is within the Quran. Since we're talking about challenges, let's explore another challenge. The challenge of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. He is that Prophet of Allah who is known as the Khalil, the best friend of Allah. Because, because of his faith in Allah. Because he worshipped Allah out of certainty. He knew who Allah was. Now there was a king by the name of Nimrud. This king, he would say to his people, Ana Rabbukum al -a'la. I am your Lord. I am the creator of everything. I am the one who takes life and gives life. I am the one who does everything. I am your Lord. So when he found out that Ibrahim والسلام, is calling people to worship Allah Azza wa Jal, and to leave what Namrud is saying, so Namrud summons, summons Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he brings him over. 
He says, what stops you from worshipping me? Why do you not worship me? Why do you worship this Allah? So if we look at the verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he, he depicts the scenario for us. He says, my Lord gives life and he takes life. And subhanAllah, if you look at the wording of these verses, the wording is so important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning of the verses Alam tara ila ladhi haja Ibrahim fi rabbi And look at the one who tried to argue with Ibrahim about his Lord An atahu Allahu al-mulk It is Allah azza wa jal who gave him the kingdom It is Allah azza wa jal who gave him the power It is Allah azza wa jal who gave him the strength An atahu Allahu al-mulk Iz qala Ibrahimu Taibu why are you worshipping Allah? What's so special about Allah? Ibrahim responds, My Lord is the one who gives life and he takes life. So what's the response of Namrud? So he brings two prisoners, one prisoner, let's the other prisoner free. I give life and I take life. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, this is fair enough. Allah azza wa jal, what he meant in this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives life. He literally gives, he creates you from scratch, from the beginning. Not something that's already established. So Ibrahim says, fair enough. But even though your analogy was silly, but there's something even more. Let's say you do this. قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْتِي بِالشَّمْسِ مِنَ الْمَشْرِقِ فَأْتِي بِهَا مِنَ الْمَغْرِبِ Ibrahim says, okay, my Lord, Allah, he rises the sun from the east, so you set it in the west. فَبُوهِتَ الَّذِي كَفَرْ He's got nothing to say. Buhit, he was shocked. The one who disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azza wa jal has placed so many miracles in your life. You, you yourself, ikhwani, you're the biggest miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my question is now, Despite the challenges that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set, what deters you from worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way He should be worshipped? Now, how do you overcome this? You overcome this, ikhwani, but when you read the Qur'an, actually have tadabbur, have contemplation, ponder upon the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu, you find so many stories in the Qur'an, so many challenges in the Qur'an that show the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he leaves it open for any person that was, is to come that thinks they are worthy of worship, then let them do this challenge. Let them create a fly. Let them all collectively come together and create this fly. Or at least in the bare minimum, let them retrieve that which the fly has taken from them. Ibn Abbas, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making reference to the fly. So he says, look how weak the fly is, even that, you could not overcome it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's showing the weakness of these gods. Look how weak they are. They can't stop a fly. 